Oh, g'day champions, it's Groundhog Day. We've got another uh, Master Volume Silver Face 20 here for restoration. The uh, a friend of the customer brought it in, so the notes provided were pretty sketchy. It just said, uh, you know, quote for restoration. So I'll have a look. One note that they did tell me, though, was uh, recently serviced. And uh, when I had a look at the notes, it was as recently as February. <laughs> uh, now, this one's been on the bench for a bit until we caught up. So it was literally about a month a month or uh, about six weeks after it was last service that it ended up here, which is often the case. There's some notes from the previous tech. We'll uh, we'll go over the thing in great detail first, which I'm known to do, and then uh, we'll have a look at the notes, see if they make any sense, um, see if they knew what they were doing, and go from there. We'll start the marathon. So join us for the ride, blah, blah, blah. All right, so first impressions, the control panel's in pretty good condition. It looks like it's been reasonably well taken care of. A little bit of spillage there, but, you know, it happens. One problem I see quite a bit, though, the old butt joins. They didn't use biscuits or anything to join the, the planks of timber. So that's come apart. And the only way to fix that is literally disassembling the whole thing uh, or, you know, inserting some butterfly um, uh, dowels or whatever you want to call them to sort of clamp that up again. But either way, that would require retolexing the top. You could probably save that piece of tolex to keep the old look. Uh, and then re-glue it, just peel it back a little and then re-glue it down once that's been done um, but having said that, it is still structural on the ends it's probably just lifting the thing by this handle is, is separated that, that join right there which probably wasn't the strongest even from the day it was made they don't build them like they used to champions and sometimes that's a good thing the grill cloth is remarkably good condition uh, it's got a slight charm there of the, the fade, the dirt and you can see the divider in the... Uh, the grill there but all in all no rips no major degradation so that's that's a plus it's actually got a set of legs on here and they're operating well no issues there it's got a new set of jj's in there by the looks of it in their floppy crappy uh mallory sockets which i hate I might replace them they just barely hold onto the valves and you can see there the bear claws are uh, lost their tension they're not doing anything there. they're not even touching the valve base so you can re-tension them, but once they sort of lose their spring, they just they just flop back again. Well, this is a worry, straight away. Someone's been spraying all sorts of shit in the power switch, so... Uh, <laughs> if Look, if a power switch is starting to play up, you replace the power switch. Spraying gobs of shit in there does not stop a high-voltage, high-current switch from arcing or having issues. You just put uh, combustible hydrocarbons in there now, which... <laughs> which is not good for obvious reasons, uh, but that also collects dirt, which then conducts because everything sticks to it. Just replace the switch. These switches are still available. Uh, I think from CE distribution, the uh, dual pole single throw with a short black plastic uh, paddle. So I'm not sure what's going on here with the electrical tape. It's always a red flag whenever you see electrical tape inside a, uh, a guitar amplifier. It should have no place at all in a guitar amplifier got very loose and corroded spade connectors which is never good for your main connection to the speakers and the wires just degraded and gone really stiff um, so we'll probably replace that and uh, hardwire everything to the speakers because what's the point of having quick connects if you can just unplug it there right now again this foot switch cable goes super stiff that uh, PVC jacket just degrades you can't even wind the stuff up it's like really hard and if you uh, bend it it cracks you can replace the wire, but it's a bit of a weird setup with one uh, shielded and one unshielded conductor. Um, someone's uh, replaced this with one of those, uh, looks like a J car, a shitty eBay uh, RCA connector, and that snapped off. That would normally be a reverb pedal. And does, it, <laughs> does that look like a good connection here? So the issue with that is it sits past the back back edge of the cabinet there so you can see that's been smashed against the ground and then eventually it's just let go and mushroomed out the uh the outer contact there and as for the vibrato it's got a break in the jacket there uh so it's probably easy to just replace the whole foot switch because uh for about 70 bucks you can have a new foot switch new connectors new cable the whole shebang so this cord's been replaced and then continuously tightened until it's uh not doing anything anymore I really don't like these plugs. I, I just cut them off and uh, basically just replace the lead with a molded one with a safety plug. Because you can see there, <laughs> you tighten it and it gets past a point and then it just does nothing. So so that's no good. 
and you always have to take these apart because you don't know who wired them up or you know if they had all their brain cells intact or not um so you, you got to inspect that they could have wispy wires touching each other the earth could be disconnected uh, you can't trust these things at all very minimum if they're in good condition you should still take them apart and make sure the terminations were done properly but i just prefer to replace the whole lead with a molded one that no one can mess around with so the reverb tank connectors seem to be in pretty good nick uh probably a little little corroded but we can clean them up and check those uh coaxial leads there for integrity and check the plugs at the other end and the reverb tank as well first we'll give these speakers a bit of a sweep see what condition they're in and just make sure there's no weird resonances or anything and we'll check the bolts on the baffle and everything make sure it's all tight and uh nothing's missing and the fuse three amps low blow now this fuse is a bit of a thing as well they specify a three amps low blow uh but this is a universal voltage so three amp when you're on 117 volts is right but when you're on 240 it should probably be 1.5 amp um because they have to specify just a, a general instead of making a little chart here or something to confuse people they just specify the uh the current rating for the lowest voltage but if you're double that it would be half the current double the voltage half the current same power all the preamp shields are present so that's a plus normally they go walkabouts all right so we'll just give these speakers a sweep with the signal generator Alright, that sounds right. It could do other weird stuff under high output, um, which we'll, we'll test once it's back together, but at least we're showing there's no complete failure of the voice coils there, or no voice coil rub at lower frequencies, so that's promising. They're probably fine. We'll at least check the DC resistance of the uh, reverb tank. 185 ohms there on the air output, which is about right. And we've got a bit of corrosion there, but once we break through, showing about 1.5 ohms on the input. So that's uh, DC resistance, not impedance, but um, but that's about what we want to see. So you can see the screws are munched up a bit there, which kind of sucks. It's almost always the way people just use like an impact driver and you know sit on it for about half an hour until they realise it's uh, it's tight. <laughs> I, I like to use uh, just hand screwdrivers whenever I can on this kind of stuff, particularly on the vintage stuff. All right, we've got the chassis on the workbench. Let's get that doghouse off and uh, see what lurks beneath. All right, previously serviced, you say? <laughs> uh, we've got 74, date code, 74, 74, all 74s. Got a bit of a bulge on that one. No splooge leakage yet. That's technical terminology, but um, it would not be in real good uh, electrical performance despite what the internet says. <laughs> what worries me though is we've got this green shit coming out the end of the uh, the leads. It's like the PVC attacks the copper after a while, or maybe the flux that they used goes up inside the jacket. You can strip it back like an inch and it's still corroded and the green, the green crud comes out, which would, the green is copper, so that would be uh, some copper uh, compound and probably conductive. So as it leaks that onto the, the eyelet board and that spreads across with the into the wax um you're just going to get conductivity issues any kind of contamination on the board like that's a bad thing so this is probably going to be a strip the boards down and fully wash them deal just like all these silver faces all right so these droppers are remarkably intolerant normally they've drifted well high by now you've got 2.15 and uh 10.8k we'll check them out of circuit but uh that's it's promising we'll probably change them anyway because there's no tonal advantages to having carbon comp there and they will break down over time we'll just have a look at the preamp valves jj's 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 something else haltron haltron never heard of that brand before don't know you know the deal champions comment below if you've seen a haltron valve before 12 at7 all right, so all the valve types are the correct types and the correct positions. The uh, sockets are nice and tight, so that's good. So just a close look at why I'm not a big fan of these. I think they're Mallory sockets from back in the day. The valve just goes in under its own weight, and it, 
it's only holding on by about two millimeters to the end of the pin uh, and not a very positive contact and they were probably okay until the bear claws lost their sort of tension um, plenty of people are going to say well they've worked fine up until now i'm like well yeah but now they don't so there's lots of better options available now so we'd upgrade them i get a lot of people arguing like oh it's worked fine for 30 40 50 years i'm like yeah it did but now it's not so i don't know what to say we we something stops working i replace it with a better option all right so the output sockets besides that there's doesn't seem to be any sign of contamination or arc damage not visible from this side anyway so we'll uh, flip over and have a look. All right, first impressions. You can already see a bunch of red flags. Just an overall look at the thing. Okay, more signs of that green corrosion stuff leaking out of it, almost every solder joint. So that's uh, that's not good. We've got tack solder joints everywhere. We've got a, bro a broken lead there. What? Uh, oh, this is not good <laughs> anyway it's pretty pretty well par for the course of a uh, silver face fender eh? at least in this region so we've got caps that are um look like they've been replaced but with caps of the same vintage you've got leads that have been like cut and then soldered back onto the lead inexplicably like what is the point of a eyelet construction well you, surfaceability you just touch your soldering iron to there and you can lift the lead out this this bloke's cut it there and then he's realized that that's not the problem I, I don't know how maybe he substituted another one in and then realized it didn't change anything so then he just resoldered this to the old leads I, like always on these ones legends this you, you can't figure out what the hell they were thinking because they weren't thinking um, they didn't know what they were doing. Simple. So yeah, they've done that to like all of them. Like, why leave the old lead on an eyelet? It's right there. Just just desolder the, the bloody thing and pull the lead out. Like, it's easier than cutting it. Like, and then trying to solder to an old lead. Uh, I just there's no logic at all. It's just just meth head behaviour again. Just total meth head behaviour. So they're probably trying to fix some sort of hum. Again, you've got the obligatory uh, melted insulation, which is always the case on these because they've got no idea where their soldering barrel is or they're using some inappropriate soldering iron. So they're probably trying to solve some hum because uh, you can see the, the carbon film um, 100 ohm resistors they've put in there. But they've paralleled them to the existing pot. But these things love to burn out um, and you've, you haven't disconnected it from the circuit. So when they burn out, they go heavily out of balance. You get more hum uh buzz and hum um but paralleling resistors across it doesn't fix it because you've still got an imbalance there because one of the sides of the the wafer burns open and now you've got a massive imbalance regardless of paralleling another set of resistors across it you've got heavily melted insulation there like burned 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 i, I don't know how that is possible you've got a lead there that's just not soldered it's like burnt solder uh and that's the anode connection on the reverb driver Everything's burnt and melted. The heater line's melted. Anywhere where rework has taken place, there's melted insulation. Everywhere. Everywhere. And they're not they're not very trivial to replace because you've got to redo all the, the heater wiring. But that stuff's pretty stiff and gross anyway. So uh, probably not the end of the world if we change that out. But it all just adds up labor costs. All because of incompetent previous person. At least they've used high-quality caps. They've used Viché in that two or three that they've replaced so that means that they must have an account with either ce distribution or or uh, digikey or someone so they are aware of where to get the correct parts from so that's almost worse because it's one thing if they're clueless but if they're if they've got a bit of a clue and they're swindling people that's that's not great but you don't know what the situation is um the budget might have been super limited We'll know when we have a look at the documents and figure out what the hell's going on. Got another area where they've desoldered something and then decided it's fine to so resoldered it again. <laughs> and just tack solder. No, no J-hook or anything. What do you need that for, champion? Well, you need that because of this. Because it just snaps again. <laughs> Can't help but laugh, legends. So many of the uh, by bypass caps are still remaining after they've resoldered them back in. Fortunately, they haven't changed most of the coupling caps because those blue ones really go bad we've got a couple of changes here i don't know if that's circuit mods 
Uh, oh, that one there looks like the mod to get rid of the ticking on the tremolo. That can often be addressed by just lead dress. You, you generally don't need, it's sort of a last resort, but that could also be a result of board leakage too. And it looks like there's been no attempt to clean the board, which is likely conductive. Oh, and what would a uh, previously worked on fender be without a couple of orange drops in the mix? So around the phase inverter, people often uh, replace all these with the black face values. There's kind of no need to do that. The biggest thing is that they've got a uh, coupling capacitor that is sort of out of step with the values here. If you change the coupling capacitor to um, to sort of suit these values, uh, if you do the do the math, which we all hate doing, uh, you'll find that the response is a lot a lot similar to the black face once you just change that one cap instead of changing all these out. But I'll run you through it on the schematic when we get to it. You can just make the values scale correctly um, and then it's electronically pretty similar to a, to a black face circuit. That's part of the reason these got a bit disparaged tonal wise because uh, cause the, the cap was uh, out of step to the, the values in the, uh, the phase inverter. Alright, this stuff around here looks stock. It looks like there was just Looks like there was just clueless fault finding, just desolder shit, resolder shit, without really any plan. Um, before you start any repair or or, or uh, modification, you should have a clear plan in your head of what you're setting out to achieve and how you're going to do it. Uh, even if you're sort of a bit sketchy on the details, make a list of what you think you should change and why you think so. Then research it. See if your your theories are valid. And then if you need to do a bit of actual empirical experimentation, you're doing it with a bit of sort of direction instead of just blindly desoldering and resoldering stuff. Oh, this is interesting. This reminds me of the last silver face I had. Maybe it was the same guy. I've got no idea the idea behind this. Do they think that the rear board's conductive? Are they that wishful thinking that they jam a bit of fiberglass in there and they think that'll fix it? Like, is this honestly... Does someone think this fixes anything? A bit of fiberglass just jammed between the, the insulator and the actual eyelet board? The, the problem's contamination in the actual board, not that it's touching the other board. But, I don't know. <laughs> like I say, there's no logic. Don't You'll go crazy trying to come up with one. Up here, the bias circuit's been recapped. You've got a, uh, a radial just flinging around in midair, which is a bad idea. At some point, we're going to have to use radials and or make adapted daughter boards or something to... Um, to be able to keep stuff running because axials just won't be available, uh, particularly in the lower voltage ratings. Pretty much been pushed out by all radials. But that day's not come yet. You can still get axials in this value to suit this application, uh, and they're reasonably cheap still, so no excuse for that kind of stuff other than you don't hold stock. And you've got some stellar work down here. The soldering's uh, some of the best I've seen. Uh, and that's got your typical unreliable ground connection which I can see the solar connections actually cracked uh, to the transformer hardware which is again not good they've got an extra cap there for the bias filtering might be able to reuse that I'll check the date code the v-shape stuff's good but I'd like to do a modification where we solder a trim pot to the back of here and make it a bias level as well as balance pot and then you got the best of both worlds so we'll probably do that as well all right they've changed the screen grid resistors with a mishmash of um, 3 watt and 5 watt not the end of the world 3 watts adequate uh, and if anything it gives a sort of fusibility uh, in the event of a, a screen short which seems to be one of the most common valve failures at least for 6L6s they've changed out the control grid stoppers they've got one metal film three carbon films and they're all 1.5 so maybe it had a shorted valve last or maybe they were just chasing their tail I don't know there's no way of knowing you got the voltage selector switch there which is starting to self-destruct so we'll probably hardwire that to 240 volts just to be safe and cap off the rest of the wires leave it on the rear panel so it looks original for them back but it won't be able to be accidentally switched to the wrong voltage and blow stuff up i can see the residue leaking out with a sprayed whatever that is into the switch so we'll have to remove that and clean it up i might i don't know we should probably replace that switch uh because once it's contaminated with that stuff kind of you can't take these ones apart to clean them and they do have a grease on them, which is intended to be there. Uh, so if we just soaked it in solvent or something, that grease would get washed off as well. We've got more of that green slime literally seeping out the end of the wires there, which is very not good because that means a lot of wires going to have to be replaced and the hours just fucking evaporate when, you, when you're doing that. It's so bad so that it's even, it's even 
run out of that wire and sort of probably when it's hot started to drip down onto the transformer that's the most i've ever seen that's bad all right we've got random blobs of solder floating around in the chassis waiting to short stuff out Ooh, stuck to the maybe the green goo is good for something all right champion so you know the drill i'm gonna rip into this one take no prisoners style and uh not take any shortcuts because I don't want to be a half job Harry like the previous bloke was. I want to do it so it's good for another 50 years. Do you reckon I'll still be working on amps in, when I'm 90? Probably, with this economy. <laughs> so I'll see you on part two. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and become a member if you want uh, want to know what I really think about um, stuff. <laughs> but yeah, join us on the live streams too. We gift, uh, we gift some um, 10, 10 memberships every month. And... Uh, some of my kind viewers sometimes gift some too. So if you're on the live stream, you could get a free membership for a month. And then uh, you might get hooked. Who knows? Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. Drink lots of water and uh, take care of yourselves, would you?